don't know how this will be working. I'm working by myself today, and it is um, raining. It's kind of overcast. Can't get the light right in here in my garage. Um, so this, the video today will be a little longer, only because I want to show you some processes, how I got from one place to another. You know, um, I'm more interested in process than product. The product is cool, but it's how an idea becomes a real thing that really fascinates me. How does something in your head become something that we can interact with out in the world? Art, music, food, whatever, clothing. Um, so I'm going to share... Uh, video I've done over the course of the week, bits and pieces of the process of this particular one gourd. Um, I'm calling this gourd Nest. I don't know if you can see it well, and I'll get put some shots of it close. This is a canteen gourd, like I showed you before. Um, but this one has got some nut hatches running across it. I made these out of clay, and I'll show you some of that. It's got stitching running through it. Uh, it was kind of fun to combine the medium of stitching with the gourd. Um, it's got a nest inside. So, uh, I will show you this, you know, um, there's both sort of like a creation and an evolution that comes together in, in the creative process. You start with an idea and as you're, you're going forward, it begins to change. It begins to evolve and become other things. So from my very first gourd, which was the greens gourd, which you'll see in the first video I did, um, to um, this gourd, which is a different type of vessel, which I'll give you more information on later in the video, to I'm just show you what I've got now and talk about evolution. So here's another canteen gourd, um, the raven, and beads sewn into it because, you know, the idea of stitching into a gourd really started to excite me. Um, and then I had these lovely red beads, so I sewed them into the gourd. And then, uh, like this leap, this evolutionary kind of leap. Um, I have got this one, which I'm thrilled with, I'm working with now, vessels, and we're starting to think about not even the gourds as vessels, but people as vessels. Um, so, you know, I'm still working on this one that's stitched and painted, and there will be things that are dropped down that you'll see through the holes here. Um, creation and evolution are kind of holding hands uh, the creative process is an evolution process, certainly for an artist or, or a creative person. You know, no idea comes in full formed. You, you get that inspiration from somewhere and um, then, you know, you, 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 you riff off of somebody else. You riff off of something you've seen and then it comes inside you and begins to evolve in some kind of way. So I'll have pictures that are better lit of these in the following video. But... <laughs> what you're mostly going to see is how I, I, I worked on this particular one, um, Nest. And uh, the name Nest didn't come to me until after I stitched it. And I, I stitched it because I had, um, I've been seeing some, some basket makers who would use gourds and, and had added basketry to the gourd. And I'm not a basket maker, but I was inspired by that. And then I thought, oh, I could stitch. And um, so I'll show you how. So this video will be a little longer than some of them. If there's a message in it, it's that uh, allow ideas to evolve. And as you work with the material, whatever that material is, whether that material is music, whether that material is gourds, paint, um, dough, whatever that material is, if we listen to it and follow it, it will evolve into its next form. And that is actually pretty cool. So... Watch what's coming up. I'm going to try to edit it. I'm not an editor, but I'm going to do my best, and I'll see you next week. Okay, so I did this... Um, just wide enough to get the scroll blade from my jigsaw in there. Uh, and I can cut around that line. So my jigsaw with a thin scroll blade, that's for cutting pretty fine uh, cuts. It's unplugged, which is why I'm just touching it like this. I unplug my tools after I use them. So I'm gonna unplug the um, Dremel and plug in the jig. I don't have lots of multiple um, 
electrical ports. So I'm just using this one extension cord and in and out until such time as I get a better system set up and get electricity in here. All right, let's see. notice also I'm holding this at an angle so that um, the top won't fall down into the side when I inside when I okay. we unplug this because really, I like all my fingers. All right, so top off. That's what it looks like in there. I'm gonna clean it up and see what that can look like. The inside of this gourd. Uh, doesn't look like there's any rotten spots. I'm gonna empty out all these seeds. Like I said, uh, it's easier than it is with a newer gourd because it's been sitting longer and everything's just dried up. Okay, oh, this was not bad at all inside. You see that inside? Yeah. So then I use my really trusty super duper tool, a spoon. Um, you can get tools for this, but you know, I got spoons. And I'm scraping out any loose stuff inside this board, but this came clean really easily. Wow, that's great. chair so low. I feel like a child. <laughs> um, all right. So, see that a little bit? Oh, that's a little yucky. Um, yeah, but I think um, it's a little more porous here. Um, that I prefer, you know, a newer board might be less yucky. Now, if I was, if I wasn't going to try to use this as a top, I would just really throw, I would throw that away. I would just toss this. Um, here's just a close-up of this gourd after I, I cleaned it up better. I used my Dremel tool with like a sanding um, bit on it, and I was able to clean off the yucky on the inside of that and also smooth out more of the inside of this. I generally either paint or, or somehow other coat the insides anyway, and I particularly will do that with some discoloration. I might use um, paper or fabric or um, paint. Yeah, whatever, whatever I'm feeling. Okay, there you go. That's how I get to this point. So this is air dry clay. Um, I've had this men, really. I've had this... I don't even know how long I've had this. I might have moved it to this house, and I've been in this house since 2015. The cool thing is that it's still good, still moist, still pliable. <laughs> it's been airtight. But they say it dries hard. Um, I can't remember what it is I wanted to do with it at the time. But lately I've been thinking about um, clay a lot because I've been wanting to work three-dimensionally. So uh, I'll show you when I'm done. Um, now I'm doing the inside. I just want you to see what I'm doing. I'm using um, Mod Podge because I had some. I'm looking for the jar. Yeah, here you go. And um, water. I've thinned it down. 
And uh, I'm using it with a brush. I've got some craft paper. I had some left over from a workshop rolled up. And I'm tearing it. I'm wetting the inside with my Mod Podge water and then placing the dry paper on top of it and then going over it so you can see what I've done. Hopefully you can see what I've already done in there. I'm never sure with the light in here covering it. Now there's some stitching and stuff in here and I'm um, I'm papering over the stitching so it'll be covered and it'll be secure. I got plans for the inside of this board. So um, I'm going to use the plain craft paper and also some that I've sort of just painted randomly with different browns and earth tones. And I'll show you what it's going to be.